Hello fam, I have a vision I want to share with you and also would like to pray for a bit with you for the lost. So the vision was, I think, three nights ago. I had been uh, asking the Lord for a few days. Uh, you know, I didn't feel his presence as much as normal. And and I'm just wanting to spend time with him, wanting to feel his presence. So as I'm praying that night, I'm just asking him why why haven't I felt your presence as much lately? You know, is, is it something that I've done? And if it's something that I've done, please show me and help me, you know, to understand and so I can repent and and not do whatever it is. Um, or if it's not, just, I just didn't know, you know, what it was, but I really wanted to spend time with him. And usually I feel his presence almost all the time. So, um, so as I'm asking this, I'm, suddenly get this picture of Jesus sitting right beside me but he's not how he normally is in his demeanor with me he's usually very with me and my experiences with the visions I've had of him not always but a lot of the time he's very joyful very happy very sweet and t completely like focused on me but in this situation he was um, like looking down and and I could just saw that he seemed really heavy and really burdened about something and I said what's wrong what's wrong and he put these glasses on me it was like the glasses just appeared but he put these glasses on my face and they were um, red red rimmed glasses and as he put these glasses on my face it was like suddenly I could see what he was seeing and what was weighing on his heart and it was scenes from the Great Tribulation it was a lot of destruction. It was, it really seemed like basically hell on earth. I mean, as is, is close to hell on earth as we could probably imagine. Um, people running and screaming. Um, there was this lady that um, I could see that she had like a cut on her face and her pants were all ripped up and there was like blood on her pants. It looked like she had tripped from just running super fast and had just fallen and hurt herself but she wasn't even worried about that she was um, but I saw her look up to the sky and scream why did you do this you you did this and like pointed up like she's talking to God and saying you did this and was just filled with hate and rage and um, unwilling to humble herself and and repent or anything it was just blaming God for everything that was happening instead of letting it do that work in her and and then I saw another scene where a lady was running and screaming and saying where's my baby and just a lot of destruction and and people really blaming God and this is what the Lord showed me that was weighing on his heart so the vision ended of, of that of that part seen through those glasses and then I turn to Jesus and I'm trying to kind of trying to comfort him, <laughs> which is not the position I'm normally in. And um, I said, saying this in faith, I said, but all the ones that we prayed for will be saved. And he said, he just, he, he was still looking down and then he looked up at me and he goes, but I want them all. And that really hit pretty deep. He said, I want them all. And it reminded me of a couple of verses, so I'm going to read those. Um, and I'd really like to just spend some time in, in a sober-minded kind of state and praying for the lost. Um, that Oh, another thing I forgot to tell. Um, when, when I saw at first that Jesus was burdened, I said, Lord, what's wrong? And he said, I don't want to burden you. I, I forgot this part. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't write that in my notes. He said, I don't want to burden you. And I said, didn't you say, bear one another's burdens? And so, like, <laughs> I know, like, obviously he knows scripture. And, but he was, he was being kind to me and didn't, didn't want me to have to carry that burden. But I'm like, this is this is what you said bear one another's burdens so I was like well didn't you say bear one another's burdens and he's like okay and that's when he handed me the um, put the glasses on me so I'm gonna read a couple of these verses 
Um, this one is Matthew 23, 37 through 39. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, this is Jesus talking. The city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I think it was a similar feeling that Jesus was experiencing here. That that heaviness, that sadness, that like the people that reject him. And he really does want them all. He wants every single one. And it's hard for us to grasp that sometimes. We're, we're happy in our relationship with him. We're thankful that we're saved. We have this wonderful future to look forward to and and we do pray for the lost and we do you know our best to, to share in the ways that he's given us to share but he knows people's hearts and sometimes their, their hearts are just cold and and nothing we at this point nothing we do or say will change them and i believe that a lot of hard things are going to be necessary to to make people get to that breaking point where they're willing to say, I'm so sorry, God, I need you. I, you know, I, I want you, I accept and, and to, to get in that humble place. Um, or even just to, to get out of their everyday routine and what they do all the time and what the things that have in this world that have lulled people to sleep and really make them just not think about life after death, not think about anything but what's right in front of their face that is so temporary. And it's going to take some serious things to get people to shake them and to, to help them realize these things and, and come to grips with, you need to know where you're going eternally. You need to make this decision. And, you know, Jesus or eternity in hell, you, they need to know this. So, I, I just know a lot is coming. A lot of hard things are coming. I know that the Lord is, I think he has even mixed feelings on it, just like we do. I think he, he gives us some of the things that he's feeling so we can feel it with him. Um, I, I do believe that. And I believe that there's, there's a mixture there. Like, I know he's excited to, to be with his people and to gather us, come for us. But there's also this, like, he doesn't want to have to do what he has to do. And and even then, there will be a lot that come to the Lord. I mean, a lot. He showed me that it's going to be bigger and more amazing than anything we ever imagined. That more people will come to him through these things. But there's also still going to be some that will not, will not humble themselves no matter what. And, and I want to pray for all of those people. And, all right, so I'm going to read... 2 Peter 3, 9 through 13. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the, uh, and the earth and the works that are done will be exposed. Since all these things are to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be? And live uh, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn but according to his promise we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth earth in which righteousness dwells so we have this beautiful hope but it's like a, a there's a, a bitter sweetness to it and and the Lord does not want anyone to perish and he, he wants every single person to come to repentance so I guess this is what I believe he wants me to get on here and spend some time with you guys really praying for the lost and for the people <laughs> for the people that will be here on earth for these things and they need us to pray for them now that as many as possible will repent and will believe and will change their hearts 
So I'm going to pray. Lord, help us to partner with you and, and feel your heart and to be willing to bear this burden with you and pray for the lost. Lord, we pray, we ask for as many as possible to come to you through these things. Lord, I pray for as many as possible now. Through anything, any means possible, that they will, you will help their spirits to be, to be ripe. First of all, that you help their spirits to be ripe and ready, like, like soil that's ready for seed. That you will prepare the, the soil of their hearts now to receive the truth. That when they encounter the truth, that they will know that it's the truth. And that they will humble them, Lord. I pray against all the idols in this world that are distracting people and lulling them to a false sense of security and into sleep to where they don't even think about anything but their little their little worlds, their little lives that are that are so short and the enemy has crafted so many distracting colorful things for us to pay attention to, so many idols that they're all going to fall away. And I pray, I pray now that all these idols that people look to, that people put above you and instead of you and in your place, that these things would come crashing down. I pray that every single one would be broken in Jesus' name. That the idols of entertainment, the idols of finance, the idols of government, the idols of, um, there's just so many things, substances that people look to more than you, um, other humans, things like that. I just pray that you would um, bring these idols crashing down, that people will be able to see through it. And I, I see that you're already doing this work, and I just pray that it would be done more and more, because people need to wake up. And, and know that nothing but you, nothing but you will save them, nothing but you gives them life, nothing but you is worth searching for and, and looking to and spending their time on in this world. And so I just pray these things in Jesus' name. I pray for the people that will be here, remain here during these, these serious years of tribulation and your wrath. And I pray for each one that I know that you have a purpose for them. I know that you have a plan because you are sovereign over all. And I pray that every single one would come to repentance, that they would allow the hard things now and later, the hard things that come, they would allow that to change their heart, that, that you would do that work in them, that softening work so that they're ready, ready to allow these things to change their hearts. And that they wouldn't cling to that anger against you. That they would see that it's it's all the sin of man that's caused all of this. And the sin of the devil and those angels that fell. All of that. But it's not you. You're making everything right. And you're doing what must be done. You're going to clean house and get things put back the way that they should be. And it's it's... It gets worse before it gets better. And I know that's the way it is with cleaning a house and and getting rid of junk. You got to get all the junk out. And and it looks real bad first before it gets better. Um, so I know that's, that's how it's got to be. But I pray for these people now. I pray that they wouldn't blame you. That they wouldn't harden their hearts. I pray that they would seek you and find you. And know that, and, and I pray that you'd give them a will of steel, that they'll be willing to, to die for you, that they will be so, so strong that nothing will make them deny you, that they will be willing to do whatever it takes, that, that once that, those things happen, you will flip a switch in them and that they will be all in, completely all in for you, Jesus, and be like, I'm willing to die for Jesus, I'm willing to do anything it takes. And, and completely willing to reject the world at that point. And I pray right now for the lukewarm, for the people that think that they're right with you and they really don't even know you. And I pray that you would help them to find you, for real, for real, find you. That you would help them to burn with a 
fiery passion for you and and to not be able to stop talking about you and that you would turn on the lights in their hearts and their minds that they would they would see what they're missing out on that they would see that the worldly comforts that they have um highly prized are, are worth nothing eternally nothing and that they would cling to you with all that they have and be willing to give up anything for you i pray for people that are pure absolutely pure for you and 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 purified from selfishness from laziness from just all the things that plague us in this modern society that well, in a lot of ways we've gotten too comfortable and I pray that you would use these uncomfortable things to turn people back to you with all their hearts and I pray that we would see the biggest harvest in all of history that you would get every single soul possible and let their names be written in the book of life and let us be able to rejoice with them in heaven for the people that we prayed for even though we don't even know their names we don't know all the people that we're praying for but we have faith <laughs> we have faith like a mustard seed that that can grow and become much more than we ever possibly imagined it could be that's what i ask for with these prayers we love you lord jesus thank you for dying on the cross for us for sacrificing yourself and everything you went through for us, Lord. Help us to live in the light of that and not live lives that please ourselves and are so short-sighted. But Help us to be eternally minded and share you in love with anyone and everyone you come, uh, that comes across our path, that you would help us to share about you in, in all truth and love and gentleness and that you would, um, every time that anyone listening any of us shares the gospel in any way that you would let that seed fall on fertile ground and that it would produce a harvest that it wouldn't just be like throwing seed away and throwing seed away that just dries up lord um, i pray like like peter on the boat fishing that <laughs> feels like we've been fishing and fishing and caught nothing and i just i i can't wait for that moment where you say cast your nets on the other side and we just there's a harvest like never before there's so much, so many people coming to you that we're in awe. I pray for that day to come. And I pray for it to come quickly. We love you so much. We can't wait to be with you in paradise. We just can't wait to be with you. It doesn't even matter where we are. We just want to be with you. I can't wait to see your face. For real, for real. With no veil between. I, not seeing dimly anymore, but seeing fully. <laughs> And knowing you fully, just as we are known fully. And, oh, it's going to be so awesome. We love you. I pray that you bless and pour out your spirit on every single person listening. Just pour out your spirit so much. I pray that they will be overcome with your presence. And and teach and guide us every single day. You have been, and it's so amazing. I pray that you continue teaching and guiding and instructing us and walking with us. And until the very moment you call us home. In Jesus' name, amen.